It's Friday Night Writes with the Stop Writing Alone community. I'm Nicole Rivera, and I'm here every single week sharing prompts, exercises, and writing prompt parties for you to be inspired for the whole weekend through. Come on in, bring your notebook, your laptop, or whatever it is you want to write with, because as soon as we get started, you'll be inspired to start scribbling away your weekend. Thanks for coming, and enjoy your Friday Night Writes. So we are here in our Friday night rights, a little off schedule this this month due to holidays, because I think it was supposed to it landed next week, right? I'm right about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So whatever, we do what we do to write with a writing prompt. Um, we have chosen the Storymatic Classic, which is that's that's the official name of it, but it is actually pretty classic for us here in the writing prompt parties. Uh, we are going to pick two cards that are going to. Well, do we want to do like straight up story matter or do we want to do the X, Y, Z? The X, Y, Z is the X, Y, what? I'm X, sorry. X, Y, Z. I, I thought this was going to be in English. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's what they speak in the Staten Island. <laughs> Staten, you did that very good. The Staten. You got to really, you got to punch it. <laughs> so it's, um, X, Y, Z is X is in conflict with Y, y over because of Z. Over Z. And those, those three letters are going to be our three cards. So we're going to have an X character, a Y character, and then they're going to be in conflict with some about something. That's going to be our third card. That's going to be the, the non-character card. Um, and so that's that's basically our premise. And then we will set a timer for, um, I guess, 15 minutes to write on that, because this is not like the sticks. We're not going to be like interrupting uh, our writing. So a solid 15. And then we'll give everybody a chance to read allow what they get after that. Does that make some sort of sense? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so let me make sure I got my right color cards here. No, you see, I did it backwards. That's what it, the gold cards are the character cards. Okay. Your ex is babysitter. Oh, God. <laughs> So the babysitter is in conflict with someone who that someone is. I'll tell you now. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Who's another card? (laughs) Insomniac. Uh, Is that the child? (laughs) I mean, in my mind. Oh my goodness. Okay. But what are they actually in conflict over? It wasn't this. These are just the two people. <laughs> what they're in conflict over is what? <laughs> Torn between two lovers. Holy cow. I'm going to need a minute. That took me in a way I wasn't thinking. Torn between two lovers. Okay. All right. How are we feeling? No reactions. That's <laughs> terrifying. That's terrifying. I'm still ready. Right <laughs> Normally, I think, let's see. It's, yeah, Jackie put it over here for us too. A babysitter is in conflict with an insomniac over torn between two lovers. So, are we ready? Wow. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This is, this may be the first time in quite some time that I haven't heard veto, pull well, more cards, like but I feel like we need to just keep moving forward. That's, that's the thing is, I mean, normally the vetoing things, you know, we started to allow, um, and I'm, and I'm cool with it either way, but the true challenge is to take what you got and run with it and see what happens. So um, 
All right, I'm gonna set a timer for everybody to start writing and I will make a little cuckoo team Liberty Flobber, which I should have had up here already. Sorry about that. You're getting extra time to write right now. And then I will be back in 15 minutes. Oh, what I would say is I'm gonna do the same, but um, if you haven't already, just um, mute your mic this way. Everybody's got nice quiet writing time. Okay, here comes the 15 minutes and I'll drop the link in the chat if anybody wants to follow along on the timer. Happy writing. Alrighty, so we have 15 minutes with our prompt of babysitter is in conflict with an insomniac over I guess over being torn between two lovers or over torn between two lovers. And how did it go for everybody? Do we have thumbs up? Oh, two thumbs up from Chris. Exciting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait. I'm worried that Stella has left the building or is she just writing somewhere else? <laughs> no, she had to go. The dog uh, needed to go out. <laughs> Charlie was not cool. Yeah, we told no. him to be cool. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> Man, I don't believe it. She oh. said she was kind of relieved because uh, she didn't get a whole lot done. So <laughs> Okay. All right. So Charlie was actually being being a, a good uh, wingman. Yeah, as, do yeah, exactly. as dogs do. As dogs do. <laughs> nice. All righty. So we've got then how many of us? Two, four, six, seven of us to read. <laughs> Jackie's like, no, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it is, do we want to get started? Is there anybody that, that wants to volunteer to read first or Chris, I thought maybe, okay, great. Um, so Chris, I, I didn't have everybody introduce themselves at the beginning in case this is the first time somebody's tuning into our writing prompt party, just introduce yourself real quick. And then, uh, and then I can't wait to hear your story. Okay. Uh, I'm Christopher Granchinski. I, write all kinds of weird fiction. Um, I have two books out on Amazon, just looked under my name. Uh, Jackie, I'll probably put it in the, in the uh, chat. And um, the name of my story is the actual first line of the story. So it's called, picture it, 1976. His parents weren't paying me enough. I can't get that song out of my head, Rory the kid from fucking hell, the six-year-old little shit, the insomniac demon. What song, I said for the fourth time. What song, Rory? I looked at the clock. When I came in the door four hours ago, Karen and Bill, Rory's parents, said their hellos and goodbyes in record time. Now I knew why. That song, he said. He was standing in the kitchen in his PJs, clutching a teddy bear. Was he too old for a teddy bear? I didn't really care about the bear. I looked at the clock, 10 straight up. Look, Rory, I said, your mom and dad are going to be home. Any, I can't go to sleep with that song in my head, Rory whined. He folded his arms and sat on the linoleum floor. Shit, I thought. I almost said it, but I bit my tongue. Karen and Bill were going to pay through the nose for this. What song, I said, putting the pause between words. The one I listen to all the time. What song, Rory? What do you listen to all the time? I almost grabbed him and shook him. He was leading us nowhere until he actually led me into the living room to the hi-fi. On the turntable sat a record. That one, he said, and he started to hum the tune. I dropped the needle. Torn between two lovers, feeling like a fool. Loving both of you is breaking all the rules. Mary McGregor's voice crooned from the speakers. Just then, Karen and Bill walked in. They saw Rory was still awake. He ran to his mom and hugged her. I knew I'd never babysit him again. <laughs> oh, wonderful. All right, so I have to know, when you saw the Torn Between Two Lovers card, yep. was, it, was it instant? Yep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful though. Yeah, it's such great uh, description of of this boy and his terror and and I just love it the it was just really 
real you know you could see a babysitter just having all those feelings and i love the uh shit i thought but i didn't say it i almost said it like that was really really great oh very good stuff and thank you for um singing for us <laughs> of course <laughs> good stuff yeah and is that so is that when the song came out is that why you went 1976 was it like a car yeah. or did you want the record or was it the whole thing uh, it was it was the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you have to I, Google it or did you know the date? Um, I had to look it up, but you know, a little cheating, but you know. No, that's not cheating. I don't think that's <laughs> yeah, that's just enough. You gotta you gotta have that. That's great. Perfect. When you were like, it's my story's called, I'm like, he's got a title. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Oh, uh, great job as always, Chris. It's it's always wonderful to have you here. This is really good stuff. Uh, does anybody else have anything for Chris? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Susie. As usual. Right. <laughs> it's really good. All right. So who's up next? I Susie. can go. All right, Susie. And same, um, same for you, Susie. If you just introduce yourself to uh, to the viewers. Okay, um, I'm Susie Taylor. I'm from Ohio, and I am a freelance copywriter and a um, every now and again fiction writer as well. So there you go. Um, I did not necessarily do the whole torn between two lovers thing, but we've got the insomniac and we've got a babysitter. So I guess we're all right. Just go to sleep, please. Avery couldn't believe Austin was still awake. But I can't, the 10-year-old whined. Why not? It's simple. You climb in bed, pull the covers up, snuggle down, close your eyes, and fall into la-la land. Simple, easy peasy, go to sleep. Austin screwed up his face and looked like he was about to erupt. It looked like a whale was about to erupt from his mouth. No, none of that, the babysitter exploded. You know, Jordan was going to, you knew Jordan was going to be here. You had plenty of time to get his attention and do whatever it is the two of you do and you do your stuff. It's time for sleep now, Avery scolded her charge. But, but no buts, we had an agreement. I bring Jordan, you two do your plaything, you go to sleep, that's it. But Jordan is so fun, I never, don't even go there. I bring Jordan. I bring Jordan over to visit more than I take him to visit my parents. And he's their grand hamster. So just do your thing and go to sleep. Austin's lower lip pouted out, but he slowly turned away from and gently picked up the plastic ball that had been rolling around the apartment. The child cradled the clear plastic toy containing the teddy bear rodent into his room. Uh, uh, whispering as he walked through the hallway from the main family room to of his parents home Avery couldn't hear what the child said but but she picked up an odd word here or there love you so soft whiskers Austin cradled the hamster in his ball and crawled into bed he carefully placed the plastic ball on the mattress and curled his body around it Avery watched as the child continued his monologue. It looked like the hamster Jordan was listening intently as he propped himself up on his hind legs, his front feet washing his face while, he, while the child talked. It only took a few minutes, but finally Austin's voice started to slow. His words were separated by longer and longer pauses. The hamster sat up and continued to wash and listen until the child's voice finally slowed and then stopped. Avery sighed, relieved, but pleased her secret weapon had worked again. Gotta love a sleep support hamster. Oh my goodness, how sweet and wonderful. First, I wanna say, yes, I commend you for owning the fiction writerness of it all. <laughs> Even though there was a little caveat, like I'm a sometimes fiction writer. Okay, I'll give it, I'll give it. But, um, that for I mean, and he's their grand hamster, like reveal was just precious and wonderful. Like that was just like a great laugh from the from the whole group. But I just so sweet, the whole falling asleep and the 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 premise of a sleep support hamster 
hilarious as they are the most insomniac, you know, like they're basically nocturnal. So it's just like perfectly, the perfect ju juxtaposition to have, this is the animal that's going to help you sleep while it stays up all night. So uh, uh, really, really cute, cute story. I loved it. Loved it. Thanks. It's it had me at grand hamster. Exactly. <laughs> it was just so sweet. That's such a great. Ah, uh, so good. Great job, Susie. Awesome. Thank you. I, I saw, I don't know if you saw, I saw applause down here too. So just in case. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> All righty. Who's up next? Mine's the beginning of a story. I'd like to get out of the way. <laughs> okay. Good luck and introduce yourself, sir. Oh yeah. Um, I am a writer and an editor, Alan Carter, Alan D. Carter, according to uh, what's going to be on the spine of my next book. Uh, <laughs> Um, but my the last book I, I was editor, and it's Ouch by Shakar Kazal. Um, it's available on Amazon. And um, oh yeah, Jackie, you can put that up too. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good at that. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll put it up in a bit. <laughs> All right. Go to bed, I said. Oh yeah. By the way. The first two lines of mine are almost identical to the first two lines of Susie's. <laughs> Go to bed, I said for the hundredth time tonight. I can't sleep, I said. The little turd said for the hundredth time. We were getting nowhere. The McIntyres were due back at 2 a.m. after the corporate Christmas party uh, Mrs. McIntyre's company threw every year. If it was going to be a night anything like last year's, uh, two in the morning was a conservative estimate. Mr. McIntyre was rather known to enjoy his parties. He was maybe 10 years younger than Mrs. McIntyre. They were always going out to these things. It seemed to me that they were very much in love, always uh, pawing at each other and talking in cutesy, oopsy, schmoochy baby voices and calling each other sickeningly saccharine pet names, all of which made it strange to hear little Reggie say what he did. Mommy and daddy are going to get a divorce, the kid, said, uh, the kid said around a cookie, his 11th or 12th, I think. It's divorce, I said, and I don't think so. Trisha's parents are divorced, and Billy's are too, and mommy has started spinning class. Uh, what? You know, spinning class. Billy says that, that if my mom started exercising, it means my parents are going to get divorced. That doesn't mean anything. And Trisha's mom started yoga. It's unrelated. I, I promise. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> oh my God. I'm dying. I'm dying. I love that. Oh, uh, first of all, divorce. Wonderful. <laughs> and that you doubled down on it. That he just said it again. Love it. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, the, the exercise thing just so, so, so cute because it's a great idea but to have it come through the other kids and the little conversations and how they're, you know, developing their ideas about the world is uh, so spot on and so, so wonderful. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you plan to keep going with that, but it, there's, there's a lot happening there already. A lot of character. On yeah. The page. I, uh, I have a few more pages of me for sure. I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just the divorce. I mean, that could be the title right there. Divorce. Divor divorce uh, rumors or something. Yeah. <laughs> rumors of divorce. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great stuff. All righty. Well, that was a quick one. So who's up next? Yeah. We're moving along today. Who do I have left? I have, oh, okay, there's Sarah's hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Okay, so I'm Sarah Ambari. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I have a novel I'm working on. And this could be uh, included in my novel. It maybe I will, maybe I won't. But it includes the the characters that I've developed, who are Mark and Krista, who are married. Um, they're two daughters, and then Krista's younger sister Rebecca, who is staying with them for a while to help out. Um, this is a, a well-to-do family in the Houston area. 
All right. Uh, this is told from uh, the younger sister's point of view. So she's acting as a babysitter uh, since she's staying with them to help out. <clears throat> okay. I stay outside to cool down after sending my nieces inside. Lydia smoking weed doesn't surprise me. A 16 year old with an ample allowance, sure. But getting her 12 year old sister high crosses a line. Though if they asked me, I'd have to say, Auntie Rebecca isn't sure what her boundaries are either. I wander around the manicured yard in the dark. I see their bedroom lights go on in the upstairs of the house. My sister Krista's bedroom is dark. I'm not waking her up for this. She has enough worries being on bed rest, wondering if the next episode of bleeding will mean another ambulance ride to the hospital. I finally go inside. I'm surprised to find Mark in the living room. He's sitting on the sofa in the dim light. I thought you took painkillers, I say. You're not trying to get through a vasectomy without meds, are you? Mark adjusts the ice pack over his nuts and groans. Ugh, I slept through and the pills wore off. I just took some more. He looks pained. What were you doing outside? I'll tell you tomorrow. Maybe I won't tell Mark or Krista at all. It's just a little weed, not a biggie. Come sit with me and take my mind off my balls, Mark says. I snuggle carefully beside him after a glance at the staircase. Is the pain really bad? Wanna see? I giggle and shake my head. Smart lady, it's not fun. He puts his arm around me. But it's worth it after my wife decided she wanted another kid. Aren't you glad it's a boy? I'm not glad about any of this. He leans his head against mine. Know what? You're the only person in this house I trust anymore. Chris is a liar. The girls, well, I have no idea how to raise girls. I don't know how to raise anyone. I had a shit dad. I need you to stay here and help me raise this boy child so I don't scar anyone else for life. He rubs my arm distract me. I remember when I was a kid and you let me sit in the bitch seat in the truck. I blush. Want to know what I thought about with you next to me? Mark says. I thrill from my crown to my crotch. Were your thoughts appropriate? No, Mark says. Maybe I should show you when it's time to test drive my customized ride. I was on mute, so you didn't hear my, oh my God. Mark <laughs> is just too much, okay? Yeah. This guy, yeah. honestly. But I, I want to just, first of all, uh, Auntie Rebecca is not sure of her boundaries either. Great, great line. Great little, yeah. I love it. And then all that stuff with Mark was just hilarious. Just the <laughs> lead in with the vasectomy and him reacting to it and then and then it just escalates between the two of them because at first it's just like oh she's just there she's seeing him regular conversation but you did such a great job of building 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 to the to and then the the ultimate perfect final line there of just like oh yeah that is where it was going of course he's so gross <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty gross here. I don't know if I can make him that gross throughout the whole book, but he is a lawyer, so. I'm... Uh, wonderful, as always. I, I'm excited that you were able to use this with your characters, because that is one thing that we've been trying to do all month is do stuff that that um, we can use with Nano. Um but I wasn't sure we were going to do it today. So it's, it's cool that you found a way to at least explore the characters, whether or not it goes into the book or not. It's another uh, dynamic, another great conversation that's happened between them. So very, very cool. That's great. Nice job, Sarah. Okay, so I think we've got three more on the board with uh, me, Jackie, and Linda. Jackie, I know you were shaking your, your head and everything before. Does that mean you are uninterested in reading? Mine is terrible. Like, <laughs> not just me just saying terrible, it is like terrible. Okay. I, it took me a moment to figure out the logic of who was who in, okay. in the whole. You know, and then I started writing and I'm just like, I don't know where this is going. I don't know what this is. It's dumb. <laughs> you know, it's like. You, I mean, you don't have to read. I'm not even, I don't want you to feel like you have to, but if you. If you want to, it, it listening to everybody else's and they have stories and they have characters and they have description 
and I mean, I have characters, but they're not very well fleshed out. Do you want to just tell us what your premise ultimately oh, was? What I was trying to do was like I had like I, I start with the yelling wouldn't stop, and then the babysitter sitting up with the kid in the bedroom listening to the parents like she just got paid they were going to take her home and then they started arguing because the father gets a phone call and the wife answers it it's like i thought the the affair was over kind of thing but then it's just sort of like it's just dumb it just didn't you know like you know when you write stuff and it's just like it just doesn't it doesn't it, land yeah it, it happens sometimes yeah it just the concept wasn't bad but i just like i read this and i'm like oh yeah, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, I, I can't make this good. I just <laughs> well, I mean, is the that context of even our writing? You know, like today's. Yeah. Just, Do you so, think? <laughs> I'm you, Jackie. <laughs> Well, that's, I do want to give you a chance to int to introduce yourself and everything, but do you think it's uh, yeah. like you, you couldn't fix it in this time or it's just sort of like, bah, it was a failed. This was just, I mean, I usually write something that I'm maybe not super fond of, but it's like, it's okay for what it is. I just feel like this just, it just didn't go anywhere. It just was sort of like. I will just say this, if there's any month for that to happen in a writing prom party, it's November because it, I'd much rather you have the floppy words here than when you are working on your project. Yeah, and, I think and, maybe and, it's that my characters and the story and all that is in my head and I'm just Yeah, like, and this, this is so divergent from, from the characters that you write. So why don't you just, in case uh, no one has met the Jackie Dana of it all, why don't you just let people know what you're writing, where to find your writing and all of that jazz. What am I writing? If you want to see that I can actually write. <laughs> I'm Jackie Dana. I posted your I, links by the way, Jackie, so people can, can read your stuff, don't worry. Oh, right, yeah. So I'm Jackie Dana and I am a freelance writer and a fiction author and I am currently writing um, a newsletter called Story Cauldron which is on Substack where I talk about storytelling and the writing process but I'm also publishing a serial no a novel series I'm I'm publishing a novel as a serial but it's part of a series it's hard to say that yeah. so the first one is done I'm in the second one and I'm currently writing the third one um, and for the paid members of my Substack, you can read it. It's an urban fantasy YA novel about teenagers and fairies and witches. So, and uh, yeah, so, and I have a novel on Amazon, but that's another thing. So, so yeah, so read that. Go, go to my story, go to my short stories yeah. over there. Go read that. And then you'll, you'll see why the babysitter, the insomniac and the torn between two lovers was not in, in sync with today's, uh, brainstorming <laughs> i mean it could have actually you know if i thought about it i could have used my two boys like i could have had like like oh. and the babysitter being something going on there yeah but the torn between love i think that's what threw me off is like if i just had the two character yes part, the torn between two lovers and i tried to work that in yeah if I to work that in i could have probably come up with a story i think i just had too many parts that i couldn't fit together yeah yeah i hear you very cool. So well, this is my first opt. I think this is the first time I've passed. Ever, ever. That's why I'm like, if if that's what you want, I'm cool with it. I get it. You know, it happens from time to time, but never, ever. On YouTube. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we all these great stuff we like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think that's, and that's totally okay, right? We have, we have to be um, sort of comfortable with where we're at. And some days are good and some days aren't great. Um, I do often worry when people say like, oh, mine's terrible. I don't want to read if it's like the first time they're at a writing prompt party and they're saying that and the, oh, I don't want to read after I heard everybody else's, but J Jackie never says it. <laughs> Jackie never is in that position. So it's like, we're beyond that. If you're, if that's where you feel, then that's totally cool. I get it. Yeah, so it didn't work tonight. Yeah, that's all good. It, it's a uh, it like I said, it happens, and it was a weird it was a weird one, I think. Um, okay, so Linda, where are you at? Are you ready to read? Did you want um, me to go first, or do you want to go first? Totally up to you. Hmm. 
My name is Linda Gold and I currently live in Austin, Texas. And I write for fun. I'm, I don't know. I might try to write something about getting older because it's a challenge, definitely. But this is my thing for tonight. It was a Thursday night. The babysitter was right on time. Mom was so happy she had to get out of the house. Her husband, the insomniac, was driving her crazy. Not only did he not sleep, he had a habit of beginning conversations with her at 2 or 3 in the morning. She had to get up at 6 a.m. in order to catch the train from Hudson Valley to Grand Central and her job and her boss was tired of her excuses. How many times has she tried to tell him to please let her sleep? Then she thought, was it his fault? He was as miserable when he spoke to her in the middle of the night as she was being awakened. Maybe this was a time to really think about her marriage and if it was worth saving. The affair with Peter was continuing to gain momentum and she felt alive with him. As she let the babysitter in, she, she reminded her herself that her husband was probably going to be pacing the house somewhere. She reminded the babysitter that, please don't worry if it gets on your nerves, just tell him to sit in the library or media room. He'll either read a book or turn on Netflix or Prime. Remind him that the children have to be up at seven and it's his job to get them ready to be picked up by the bus stop. The babysitter was used to the husband's behavior and pretty much paid no heed to it. She usually had on headphones while doing her homework and the timer on her screen alerted her to check on the children every 30 minutes. So she assured mom that everything would be fine. Just go to the meeting and she would be fine. As Jane put her coat on, she checked the children's room one more time before leaving. They were sound asleep. Brody had his arm around his woofy and Tyler slept with his poo bear as always. She smiled and quietly crept downstairs. Her husband tried to engage her before she left, but she insisted she would be late and they could talk later. After all, he would certainly be up when she returned. Her car sped up the highway to the Notel Motel, room nine on the main level. She texted Peter right before she took off the seatbelt and as soon as she closed the car door, she saw the door to room nine had been opened and Peter was smiling at her. That's it. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I, I love the, the whole, uh, the agony of this late night conversation. <laughs> and when you said that he was as miserable as her, I'm like, yeah, he's exhausted. I get it. But then the following line was, should I save this marriage? And I was like, holy crap, that escalated. But then you didn't leave me lingering with that. It was the right after that, the affair with Peter that makes me feel alive. And I'm like, what's happening? It's like, <laughs> we, we just recently did an exercise in the Happy Campers about raising the stakes, raising the stakes, doing it really quickly. And you just delivered on that. It was like line after line, you know, it's like I'm miserable and I'm tired. Uh, my marriage isn't great. No, nobody's happy. <laughs> nobody's happy. Uh, the marriage isn't great. Wait, what? Uh, affair? What is happening? So um, really, really cool. And then I love when we came back to the final lines of her leaving and the husband tries to engage her at the door again. And like part of you is like, oh, this guy's conversations are often exhausting. But then the other part is like, this is your husband and he wants to talk to you. Like, what's going on? Oh, she's going to see freaking Peter again. And, and you know, <laughs> so um, yeah, really, really cool. And, and nice and, and complete, All it's all paying off right in the end there to see Peter at the end. I mean, and, and the thing is about it, I don't know if anybody else had this sort of like vibe from it. It, it like, I got the, the feeling that um, this, this thing with Peter wasn't like great, you know, it's like, oh, no tell motel, like, is this really what you want to be doing? But she's just like in, she almost seems like she's exhausted in that's, she that's that version. <laughs> Yeah, I just felt like exhaustion was like a, a theme. And it's like, oh, what kind of decisions would she make if she had more sleep? <laughs> that was really where I was coming from at the end. But a great job, Linda. Really, really great job. I, well, thank I, you. I think a good, good title would be like exhaustion, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what, you know? Yeah. 
because I like you can feel her like excitement about seeing him, but it's like one of those things that it's like, no, no, you don't want to be excited by that. Better than the Notel Motel, someplace nicer. <laughs> So, and then also the, the, the kids so sweet in their bed and everything. It's like, oh, you got this potentially nice thing. However, all of the instructions to the babysitter was again, exhausting, exhausting. Oh, great stuff. Yeah. It's one of those, I, these stories that you could just keep talking about. So, um, wonderful. Yay. And the babysitter was Thank exhausted. You. Yeah. Yeah. Every 30 minutes I'll check on them. She knows what's going on, you know, like, you know, she knows she's been doing this for a while. Right. She's babysitting. The husband is up wandering about, <laughs> not taking care of his own children while the wife is out at a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. See, that's, that's kind of where I wanted to go with mine and I just couldn't. Yeah. yeah. So I like she pulled that off. Good that's stuff. Good. Nice. Thank you, Jackie. Good stuff. All righty, guys. Well, I will try to read quickly um, before I uh, have you hanging on all night. My name is Nicole Rivera. You may know me from the Stop Writing Alone podcast or right here on this YouTube channel. I do this regularly. But today I did something new and cool. And I started a new Substack myself where I'm sharing my stories instead of hoarding them. So if you want to read my stories, some of them you may have heard here if you've been tuning in to the YouTube channel. Um, you can go to storyhoarder.substack.com. Did I do that right? Is that my, that's my link? That's my link. Here's my story. No title. I got no time for titles. I had 15 minutes. All right. I don't even know if this is good. Jackie, at least you had the, the presence of mind to know what you were doing. Okay. At Shady Hills, the nightlife is where it's at. My kids thought they were showing, slowing me down, putting me in this home, but life just got interesting. They instituted a new in it together policy due to the decreased post COVID staffing issues. We are each other's babysitters every night. Oh, every night we rotate and I'm barely able to touch my jello as tonight's assignments are coming in. Please, Tom, I think. No, wait, please, Nick. I wipe the drool that begins to gather. Jasmine, the head orderly, leans over and quietly says, sorry, Rita, honey, it's your turn with Vito. Motherfucker, I think. I won't see anyone tonight. I trash a jello and head over to Vito across the room. He's drinking a cup of coffee while eating chocolate pudding. Vito, I screech. Everyone makes a scene at Shady Hills, so no one cares but him that I am yelling. Why the hell are you loading up on all of the sugar and caffeine when you know you have sleeping problems? Why you care, Rita, he grumbles. He couldn't make it clearer that he's the only one not getting any in this place. I care because I'm stuck with you tonight and I was hoping to get over to Nick's. He laughed and pointed over to Nick with Ella already wheeling him out of the room. Son of a bitch, I muttered. And I hear Ella's got one of them there sexy bugs. You're going to want to give Nick some space after tonight. Whatever, I thought, looking around to find Tom. Your other boy toy is out of commission too, sweetheart. Tom's hip broke this morning, heading to St. Mark's tomorrow. <laughs> Unless you were planning on giving him a nice goodbye. F you, Vito, I said, grabbing his wheelchair to bring him to his room. He laughed again. Oh, Rita, you couldn't handle me. I'm up all night. Jesus. God. I thought I was going to write about a kid. No, because of this card right here. This card right here. Oh, my God. Okay. What am I supposed to do with two lovers and a babysitter? I think so. That is awesome. Has a new story. Harry Potter has a new story coming. That was great. That was you nailed that ending, no pun intended. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was recording for that pun. There you go. <laughs> very, um, very good, Nicole. Yeah, it was fun. That was a fun one. So, but silly. 
<laughs> How about for going in a different direction with the babysitter business? I didn't know what to do. I mean, the lovers thing, I'm really impressed with, with all of you that incorporated the lovers with the babysitter I, because immediately, and it's so interesting with prompts because the certainty, you know, in that moment when you hear the prompt that you know what the story is about. So I saw a babysitter and insomniac and I was like, I was having a blast with, you know, a hilarious kid in my head and what was going to happen. And then these torn between two lovers came out. I was like, no, where's my innocence now? It's gone. So I just went the other way in all the ways, not a child. I went old instead of young. I went <laughs> not, <you> did. <laughs> not innocent at all. <laughs> I've ever heard a story of yours that like went there. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> not my normal. Not, sort of, not really. Uh, what a PG. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like a, or an R-rated story from Nicole. It's yeah, it's you, not. You don't often. get the MF out of Nicole. Right now. <laughs> uh, <right? laughs> not in my writing, anyway. <laughs> but the, the the broken hip part. I mean, it's so not funny, but it was so exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was, yeah. I had to take him out of the game because I realized I was running out of time because my original idea when I started, it was like, it was going to be all night that she was going to be talking to Vito when she wanted to be going to these guys. Like, I thought that's where the conflict was going to be. But I was like halfway down the page and she didn't even find out that she was his babysitter. I'm like, well, now I got to just make things happen quickly. I got to take these guys out of the game. You got to raise those stakes. I had to. Tips. Not slow raising the stakes, fast. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So, good pick on the story, Matic guys. Thank you so much. I, I, um, I had fun tonight. I mean, I always have fun with writing prom parties. I gotta love it. But I hope you guys did too. And I apologize that we won't be um, having a Thanksgiving edition of uh, our writing prom party. But you know, I know for Al, that's especially weird because it's just Friday. It was last month. Right. And it's not right. Thanksgiving was last month for you guys. But um, yeah. So thank you again. And um, any last thoughts or anything for the anyone that might tune in here? Thank you. Thank you. You did a great job again, Nicole. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I will and presenting put everybody... and writing. Oh, thanks. I'll put everybody's links into the um, show description so that you, um, whoever's out there watching can uh, follow all these awesome people um, and get and support their writing wherever it's happening. But uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Bye. Nicole. Have a good happy night. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, good happy night. Thanksgiving, true. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your writer friends. And if you need anything else from Stop Writing Alone, head to stopwritingalone.com.